All right, 84.1, back from holiday break. Um, also, thank you for your condolences. It was also a funeral break um, for my brother. I appreciate your good wishes. Um, he was an observant Jew, and a, a, a very strict Jew, and it turns out you can't do an autopsy. So... We won't know exactly what happened to him, but you can do a visual examination. You just can't uh, pierce the body. But from looking into his eyes, it looks like he may have had an aneurysm at the base of the brain. There's this thing called the circle of Willis, which is a, a network of, of, of uh, blood vessels that sometimes goes bad. Um, and that we're thinking it was that. Um, based on looking at his optic nerve and stuff. So thank you. We, uh, well, yesterday, or not yesterday by the time this is up, but we threw up, the last episode we threw up was a vintage episode. There are about a dozen episodes we uh, never got around to editing from the early days of the show. And so since we've been on break, we threw up, we edited and tossed up one of those. Now I guess we should talk about... On the way over here, you talked about the, 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 the Golden Globes, and there was a moment where uh, one of the actresses, I wanted you to... Oh, tonight was the Golden Globes. Oh. And the, it was the, where she says that she's going to force 50% of the people... Oh, uh, Regina King won for uh, If Beale Street Could Talk, and she said from now on, or for the next year, she said it's, you know, this is the... This is me, I guess this is the second Golden Globe since Me Too and Time's Up. And she says now she's only going to work on projects where uh, half of the uh, staff and crew is, is female. Um, and uh, it seemed like a fairly big moment for you know, statements like that. Um, you know, she wasn't coming out abstractly and, you know, in favor of, of Tibet, for instance. Um, she was saying, this is a specific thing I, I'm going to do and I want everybody in the room to think about doing. That's um, why Lance's view of that. Uh, I think it's absurd. Um, they've done studies that uh, most stories are... Uh, Un, un, favor most stories are about men. Not to, I, I don't, I think something like 70% of all stories written, just stories, just things that people discuss are about men. And I suspect the reason is because uh, men's lives have more action. And it's a visual medium, films. So I don't, I don't see any reason to change that unless people clamor for more uh, feminine subjects. Yeah, but you could still do Taken 4, which is a man's movie starring a manly man doing manly shit, and it could still be directed by a woman. Oh. Well, you know what? I wouldn't want... 50% of the artists in a uh, art show to be have to be women. I wouldn't want 50% of the subjects that I paint to be female models. I think it's sick for people to have to even think about this stuff um, when they don't have to. Uh, women are doing very well. They are 60% of all college students. Uh, they're when, doing less well in Hollywood, statistically. Well, I mean, they're okay. doing better than they used to, but they're still, you know, under w ridiculously underrepresented. If you're interested in, well, if you're talking about studio heads but and directors of yeah, big budget movies, but it takes decades of a person's life to get to the point where people will give you a studio to play with or a big budget movie to play with. It's and still I, easy I, for guys. I don't think that people are consciously... In, in Hollywood, of all places, I don't think people are going out of their way to hurt minorities. 
or, or to discriminate against them. Um, but unconscious goes a long way. And also the established you know, structures. Yeah, what structures are those? Well, the, you know, your friend, you grew up in Holly, you know, you, the way you, you do a Hollywood career is you, you know, you, you start out young being a PA or an assistant or some lower level job, and then you, you and your peers, your friends, grow up and move into more important, more powerful jobs. And if you're, ne if you're used to having your guy friends and just guys in, you know, when you, when you think of who's going to direct the next Marvel movie and, you know, like three or four guys come to mind, that's kind of an established thing. Though, you know, Wonder Woman was directed by a woman. I assume she'll be able to, she'll get to direct Wonder Woman too. But that was kind of a breakthrough in big budget action movies, uh, Marvel movies. Wow. So it, it takes people, you said it, it's not intentional, but, um, you know, when people think of existing relationships, they, it, it may help to prompt people to, to think beyond their immediate relationships. Well, I think if people want to voluntarily give up their position as director and give it to a woman out of the kindness of their heart, uh, more power to them. Uh, if you would like to be replaced by a woman in this job, uh, that's fine. I could get a female director uh, for this show, and I'm happy to there do it. There is a female director. I, I'm, uh, but yes, Camille. But uh, I myself am not uh, broad-minded enough to let a female take over the completion of this painting. But uh, I understand your, your, uh, your incredible liberality of mind. Would you like it if somebody was to take over your job as a comedy writer at Jimmy Kimmel because they well, were a female and they have the right genitals? There's a story about that. No, actually, there's not. There's not a story about that. <laughs> Say it. No, but uh, no, I can't. Um, but uh, no, I mean, the only thing that would bug me about, um, you know, I lost my job at Kimmel years ago. Um, and if I found, found out that I'd been replaced by somebody who was suckier than me, then but I, I don't know, I can't judge that stuff. And I'm not the judge of that stuff. The people who run the show are the judge of that stuff. Oh, God! Wow! Come on! What? You know what? I, I'll tell you something. I used to be a teacher at colleges. I taught at a whole bunch of colleges. And let me tell you something. They got to the point where they only hired women because if they hired a man, he inevitably was accused of something. So they, they felt like the safest thing to do would be to just hire women. Um, so it's, to me, it's, uh, it's insane to hire anybody unless they're qualified for the job. It should always be the best person for the job, and you know perfectly well whether you were good enough, Rick. I was good enough, but uh, there, I would think that statistically if they got lucky they would be able to find people who were better than me let me tell you something Rick there are no women better than me at what I do okay but I, I can tell you that uh, I was a, a really good comedy writer, but I wasn't the best comedy writer on Kimmel. And it would, I assume that they found people who, I don't know, let's not go, let's go back to arguing about politics. All right. Um, so, uh, we're on day 16 of the shutdown. Um, and Trump is threatening to declare a national emergency to get funding for the wall. Good idea. Well, all right, if you, if you were going to declare a national emergency because of the people entering over the southern border, he should also declare it via time machine back in 2001 
when the number of people coming over the southern border was uh, at least three times the number now. It's been fairly steadily declining for nearly 20 years, the number of people coming over the southern border. Mm -hmm. Completely irrelevant? Well, I mean, he's calling it, he's saying it's a national emergency, so why is it now a national, why is, are people coming over the border now a national emergency? Rather than when the number of people coming over uh, was, people were coming over at a rate more than three times the current rate. It was an emergency then too. It's just that Democrats uh, liked it. So they didn't go along with it and Republicans were too stupid to fight about it. All right, so here are the arguments. One, half the pe at least half the people, and actually more now given the reduced number coming over the southern border, most people who are in the country illegally are visa overstayers, people who, came, you know, foreign visitors who came here le with legitimate visas and then they just don't leave. Yeah, doesn't matter. Okay. Um, the drugs that come over the border, for the most part, come through checkpoints mm -hmm. um, hidden in cars rather than coming over you know, across where the wall would be if there were a wall. One more thing that doesn't matter. Okay. Um, say roughly 100,000, I, I don't know how you estimate the number, but I'm saying based on the people caught crossing the border, it's reasonable to say that maybe 100,000 or 150,000 undocumented people at most, get through or get into America via crossing the southern border. Wow, I had no idea it was that bad. I don't think. Thanks it, for I don't telling know. us, I don't Rick. know. I don't know. Just thank a, oh, I, thank God we've got a president that's going to build a wall and try to stop that. But at the same time, you've it's got. It's only the beginning of January, and I'm already going for his dick. I hate it when we see her underwear. You think Moses would have underwear? I don't know. I think All modern right. people show their underwear. All right. So um, but you're trying to convince me it's a good thing to let I'm hundreds of thousands of people over the border. I'm saying that, well, that... Because there's, it's really not that big of a deal. It doesn't bother you. Are there terrorists coming across the country? All right. Then another... But I'm saying that if you're looking... If it's a crisis now, why wasn't it a crisis when the numbers were three and four times as And large? I answered that already. Yeah. It was a crisis then, except that the Democrats didn't want to do anything about it. And we had uh, Republicans that liked the cheap labor that they could give to their donors. And why aren't you, then why shouldn't you be worried about getting a lot more money for visa overstayers rather than? We, we should. There are three things we need to do, and Trump's in favor of all of them. Okay. One of them, one of them is to end birthright citizenship. The second is to start enforcing E-Verify. Now, I'm going to flesh those out. Birthright citizenship means that if a Chinese lady or a, a lady from south of the border comes over here and is able to spit out a child, that child is an American, and therefore we can't get rid of the child or the mother. And Trump says this is a crazy way to handle immigration. That's not a policy. That's just chaos. Number two, E-Verify means that the employer will be fined or, uh, and, and harassed by the government if he hires uh, an illegal alien and E-Verify proves whether or not somebody's an illegal alien when it's conducted properly. Trump's in favor of both of those things. As far as people overstaying their visa, no, what, what, because of about. overstaying visas, we need ICE to follow up on things like that, which is an internal border security uh, force. And finally, the wall will cut down whatever the other percentage left over is. And if it's 25%, good. What's the problem? All right, let's talk about E-Verify for a sec. When you say E-Verify, basically you're talking about 
a national ID system. And you're going to tell me that that's fascism. No, no, no. I think I'm, no, this is a place where I can agree with you that a national ID system is reasonable and that the arguments against it on the liberal side and on the conservative side are either antiquated or just weird. I agree with you. That there are some arguments to be made that, you know, we, America's a country based on freedom. And, some, and people on both sides are afraid that a national ID system could be abused and keep too much track of us than we would like. But in the era of, um, you know, Facebook knowing everything about you, Google knowing everything about you, um, I don't know, it seems like those horses have already gotten out of the barn. I agree with you. And besides, you have to show a Social Security card to get a, to get a job, theoretically. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why the Social Security guard card couldn't be linked to your birth certificate and a picture ID. Yeah. Um, so we're in agreement. Well, about that aspect of it. There's no reason, there's, I mean, and we do have a national ID system, passports. There you go. But, you know, passports, are getting one is a pain in the ass, and I don't know. I just got a notification from the Department of Motor Vehicles that I'm going to have to settle up uh, my, my real identity. Oh, we, we, yeah, that, in California, uh, you need to get real ID. I guess everybody in the country has to get real ID if you want to fly out of the country. Is that the deal? Or is it to fly at all after 2020? Domestically too? Yeah. All right, see, when I started checking IDs in 1980, 17 states had paper IDs. No picture, just a, a piece of paper with typing on it that said who you are, which made it ridiculous. It was the golden age of fake IDs. It was ridiculous, and you know the fake IDs I ran into were people who were 19 years old who wanted to uh, drink in a bar for 21-year-olds. Um, but any, but um, so anyway, shit's tightened up since 1980, and now I guess every American who wants to get on an airplane is going to need something called Real ID, um, which is a a more stringently verified identification system linked to your state's driver's license, or your, well, your DMV. It doesn't have to be a driver's license, but it, it comes out of the DMV, and it turns out that um, California thought it was doing a good enough job, and then somebody ruled that our IDs and driver's licenses aren't good enough to be real IDs, or true, is it, yeah, real ID, right? Well, what's been happening is the Democrats were trying to uh, prevent uh, a way of verifying who the voters are. And this week, uh, Judicial Watch was able to sue the state of California so that they would have to reform their voter rolls because it turns out in Los Angeles County alone, the Democrats have over a million people on the voter rolls that are either dead or have moved away. All right. Judicial Watch is a conservative organization. They're the ones who uh, uh, suggested Kavanaugh for the Supreme Court. Yeah, and they just won because uh, even though this apparently really bothers Rick, Rick wants dead people to be on the voter rolls. That's not what I want. You okay, so then why do you have to say shit about uh, Judicial Watch? They just won in court because your side wanted dead people and people that have moved away to be able to vote. That's what they were doing. And the court ruled no, in their I'm favor. Sure. No, you're sure of nothing. They, and the court said keep this, telling me what I am. this is unfair. And the court ruled that, the Californ that California has to take these people off the voting lists. Because uh, my theory 
is that the Democrats have been using them to vote. And that's why California is mysteriously blue and keeps coming up with millions of voters. Well, so, yeah, that's your theory. That's my theory. But, but, but why, uh, why is it? Why is it then? You tell me, just using your logic, why does California want a million people in Los Angeles that have died or moved away to still be on the voter rolls? I don't think that's what the state, this was versus the state of California? Yes, yeah, it I was Judicial the, Watch versus the state of California, right. and they just won this week, and now California is going to have to take those names off the list. Okay, I think California, or most Californians, want it to be fairly easy for people to be able to vote. Including the dead? No. Well, then why don't they just but, take those names off the list? Why did, why did they have to be sued? I assume... And I don't know, because this is the first time I've heard this story, and you can blame Then why are you arguing with me? Because I know Judicial you, Watch, because you oh, guys Oh, you know love. Judicial Watch. You know them. I know they're been, You understand them. You know. You've been convinced. Now, they just won a court case saying that your side was wrong, that the state of California was letting dead people be on the voter list. And all of a sudden, because you know about Judicial Watch, you're against this idea. You want to keep those dead people on the voter list, right, Rick? No. But then Judicial Watch and here's you are in agreement. No, here's the deal. How much is it going to cost to clean up the voter roll? Nothing. Why? It's because free. all they all they have to do is send out pieces of paper which are less than a penny a sheet and probably some stamps, some sort of postage to all those million households and say, are you still alive and living in California? Because if you're not, you can't vote anymore. Too expensive for you, Rick? Democracy a little costly? It's okay, I mean, it's, it's okay, except that real the Judicial Watch... I know, you hate Judicial Watch. Is right, it good. wrong you guys, to get them okay, off the list? Conservatives kind of love... Here, your point of view is that the Democrats love easy voting because you think we can get all sorts of sh have all sorts of non-legitimate voters vote and multiple voting and all this voter fraud. Yes, that studies have shown doesn't really exist. No, studies have shown that over a million people in California were on the voters list. Did they and, vote? Well, listen. Let me tell you what the Democrats do. They have something called ballot harvesting. And it turns out that the Democrats have been going around to illegal aliens, okay, people that shouldn't be here at all. They call them dreamers. We call them illegals. And what they do is they go to every, they knock on every door. So they're not allowed to vote, but they've, motiv they've mobilized an army of illegals to go around California with the ballot. Mm -hmm. And they go into people's homes. Ballot harvesting allows them to go into people's homes and say, would you like to vote? And the person says, yes. Now, we don't know. Technically, it's illegal for them to tell them who to vote. But if just between the two of them, they happen to say, who should I vote for? Well, the illegal alien might just tell them you should vote Democrat. So what and you're saying mysteriously, is that California has more people under these conditions of, of shouldn't be on the ballot than any other state, and mysteriously, Trump uh, lost by three million votes, all in California. Coincidence? I don't think so. No, I'd say that California voters aren't as stupid as voters in other parts of the country. And, and, but, 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 but coincidentally, they have more... They have more dead people and people that shouldn't be living in the, that are not living here on the voter rolls than any other state. All right, let me s cite the standard statistic, which I've cited before. Studies of national elections where they've looked at a total of more than a billion votes cast. You know, you don't get a billion votes in every election. There aren't a billion Amer American voters. But, you know, in a presidential election, you'll get 130 million votes cast. Anyway, so they, they've looked at, at, so they've totaled up these votes over time until they've looked at more than a billion votes cast. And out of a billion, they found roughly 30 instances of non-voters voting. Yeah, that's bullshit. 
That's and and when I told you three, I've told you in three consecutive shows now mm -hmm. that the head of the voting commission I know, in this New York guy, City, the we watched in it. New York City, claims that they were bu that the Democrats were pulling in busloads of illegals to vote in precinct after precinct. You you just refuse to believe that. Instead, well, you just keep repeating this thing that you heard. Well, it's a study. It's I know a study it's wrong. Done by, it's wrong. You can say it is, but it's forty-five more legitimate people in the than, whole country. It's in, in wait in a hundred and sixty million people. There's only voting. There's only forty-five that were illegal votes. They have. Do you believe that? Yes. Forty-five. No, I believe it's less. It was like 31 or something. 31 people in the entire United States, Rick. Think about it before you answer. We're talking about 130 million votes. You think 31 of them were illegal? We're casting votes illegitimately. Okay, so you're lying to me because three weeks ago, you were very excited to tell me that the Republicans had stolen the North Carolina election. Get it straight, Rick. Which is it? That's not, that's a different, that's a different definition. No, it's exactly the same thing. You see, when it suits you, there is no illegal voting. But when it's against you, there is illegal voting. Well, for one thing, the study came out, like, what, two years ago now, four well, years since ago? Since then, you claim that North Carolina changed everything. Well, in North Carolina, people were caught... Now, see, what you're telling me happens in California is yes. that people who are not, who cannot vote, yes. dreamers, they yes. can't vote because they're not citizens. They're ballot harvesting. They're going around. They are, ba they are ballot harvesting. And they're harvesting. canvassing for candidates. Yes, they are. But anybody can go around canvassing for candidates. Yeah, it's perfectly legal, yeah. except if you're an illegal alien, you shouldn't be here at all. But you're so camp. You just you just don't like the people. You don't think the people who should who are canvassing. You think they should have been kicked out of the no, country. No, no, no. I'm saying that we that California has instituted ballot harvesting, which shouldn't be legal. It sh but you should what have you're to calling vote. ballot harvesting is canvassing. No, it's not. Canvas canvassing means uh, promoting a certain political party by going door to door. Ballot harvesting means you bring the ballot to the apartment building and you knock on every door in the apartment building, have the people fill it out, and then take it back. Now, that shouldn't be legal. I don't know the rules of that. In that more, in I just more, told you what the rules are. So, I know in North Carolina. That's what they did, and that's what they you're upset did about. That. Yeah. You're they, upset they, about it if the did. Republicans do it, but you're not upset if the, Calif if the oh, Democrats do it. Then you're going to have to show me where that was done, because I haven't seen any... It was done any... in North Carolina and California. You're do you think we should stop that? You're going to have to show me where it was done in California, because I've seen zero news stories that that was being done. Well, co surprise, surprise. I know, you it's, didn't it's the hear media. About it. The but media let's, didn't just, tell you that they're about harvesting when in we Democratic break, states. When we break, let's just put a fucking thumbtack in that wait, and we'll wait, come wait. back to it. Are they, all right, it is your contention that there are no ballot harvesting going on in California. The Democrats are not ballot harvesting in California. No, it's my contention that... You're going to have to show me a story that convinces me that ballot harvesting was going on in California and okay. was being done All by right. dreamers. All right. No, let's not All break right. yet. We haven't ballot been going on. Ballot harvesting is being done in California. It's perfectly legal. Let's it, look it no, up right no, now. No, let's, we'll no, forget. Let's we'll forget. I'll forget. I'm getting older. All right. Hello, everybody. We got to get the light on. All right. Well, let's we got to start with this light to show my back. All right, 84.2. It's the middle of winter. It's cold. Lance has got a super powerful new heater that apparently gave me a sunburn. So I'm going to turn off the frickin' heater and put on a shirt instead. Just turn it off, lights. All right, All right. so i got to put a shirt on to be warm instead of using this heater that's cooking me. Let's see the back of your shirt. Wait, hold on. Okay. All right, so Being it's a powerful back, uh, Rick. Thanks. No, you know, you know, the one muscle area I don't really do much anymore is lats, so it's not that powerful. Mm -hmm. Just because I don't have a favorite lat machine at most gyms. 
But, uh, can you tuck in your shirt? I can, yeah, even though it makes me look like the old man that I am. I, I have uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of elderly women that say you're a, you're a very, uh, you've got a lot of uh, oh. dignity and charm. Okay, speaking of dignity. The, you every, look very every, dignified. Right? Every week we have a pizza and I chip in to pay for the pizza and the dollar bills that I gave you this week have been, have been down my pants. I got a stripping job at the age of 58 and almost two-thirds. Though really, at this point, anybody who hires me to, to strip is hiring me as a gross joke rather than an erotic experience. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right, but anyway, you got my pants dollars for the pizza. Okay. I, I wanted you to be appalled. Anyway. I, uh, it's, a little, it's a little hostility, but I don't react. Okay. I, I, right. I, I try to pretend that I'm not upset by that. All right. So you showed me an but, article from the San Diego we're, we're, Union Tribune about ballot harvesting. Yeah. So the deal is that it's legal in the state of California to go canvassing and um, offer to take people's absentee ballots back with you to the polling place. Um, but this, uh, they said it was only noted in one California county, um, and it was only to the tune of one or two hundred ballots. Which no, no, there's ballot harvesting all over California. Read the article. They, they, no, no, they they were saying that it was that they couldn't find any uh, anything untoward. No, but the, the 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 in the state where this is legal. Yeah, it's not legal in in North Carolina, but it, it quotes both Republicans and Democrats saying that the way it's done is hasn't been abused, and it's just a matter of it's it's part of canvassing in the state of California. Now maybe it's something that needs to be addressed, or people will want to address in future elections, but it hasn't, according to the people cited in that newspaper article, it hasn't been subject to abuse. No, the, the Republicans are, are mad as hell about it. Not the ones in that article. Okay, do we no, have to stop and have me no, read the no, article, no. or can we move on to a different subject? Yeah, let's move on. I, I can assure you that I've heard Republicans complaining about it, and that's why I brought it up. But if, okay, if, if, all, right. If, all right. All right, go ahead. What's another? Let's have another subject. All right, so let's go back to the arguing about the border and national emergency. So, yes. You know, we can talk about 800,000 people, government workers, being either, well, not getting paid, and either out on furlough because of it or just working for no money. Okay. And uh, you can compare that to the number of people that um, are affected by, you know, other hot political potatoes right now. For instance... And this is dumb because it'll never happen. But Al, your favorite person, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, um, suggests a 70% um, federal tax rate on annual income, a individual's annual income, above $10 million. Do you regret saying that you would like to vote for her for president? Well, that's not exactly what I said. Given I, I, if right. she got the nomination against a normal Republican, you said that you would vote for her. Well, no, I wouldn't because my vote would be wasted because and she's, then, then she's try, not old enough to be president yeah, you, until 2024. Yeah, you tried to weasel out of it. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd probably vote for her if she were old enough to be president. Even though she says that she would like a 70% tax rate on people making over $10 million? Well, let's explain exactly what that is, because Steve Scalise and other people have been misrepresenting it. The deal is that the tax, you're only talking about a 70% tax rate, A, which isn't going to happen. Nobody would allow that to happen now. Well, they would if you voted for her. No, uh-uh. Well, if she became president because other people, as misguided as yourself, voted for her, you would still then it never could get that happen. Passed. Anyway, what do you mean it could never get passed? She's in the Congress right now, and you said you'd vote for her. So don't tell me it wouldn't happen. This is your fault, Rick. Well, nothing's going to happen. It's not my fault. Nothing's going to happen. It is the Democrat. Anyway. It is the loyal Democrat drones that created this craziness. All right. So 
It used to be, in the 50s and 60s, there was a 94% top tax rate on incomes either above 450 grand during some years or a million during the early 60s. Uh, um, and, but that wasn't an effective rate because most people who made that kind of money uh, New, were able to take advantage of tax loopholes and end up, ended up paying a much lower rate. The only person that I know of who paid 94% of, of his income above a million dollars every year was Elvis. And the reason that was was because the colonel was a draft-dodging illegal alien from Holland who was passing himself off as an American, and he didn't want to get in any legal trouble, so he just he didn't play any games with it. He never let Elvis, after Elvis came back from the army where he was stationed in Germany, he never let Elvis do a, a European tour. He didn't want any, he didn't want to go out of the country, he didn't want any scrutiny by the IRS, so poor Elvis had to pay any money he made over a million bucks at a 94% federal tax rate. Most other people, though, could find loopholes. Most other people weren't managed by the colonel. Um, but anyway, with the current suggestion by Cortes, um, say you earn $10,500,000 a year. And there are only 16,000 households in America out of a total number of households of close to 130 million that earn more than 10 million bucks a year. But if you earn 10 and a half million, only the half million above the 10 million would be taxed at the 70% rate. So there are only about 5,000 households in America that make over 15 million a year so that one third of their income would be, five million of the 15 million they made would be taxed at 70%. And there are only about 1,500 households in America that make 20 million or more so that more than 50% of their income would be taxed at 70%. That's a lot of math. But the deal is, A, it's not going to happen. B, it would only affect you know, one household in about 80,000. Uh, and I know you'd say that, that's still not America. It's not liberty. It's, 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 it's confiscatory. Okay, I'm just going to limit myself to one mathematical number, and that is that 80% of the taxes are paid by something like 12, 15% of the people. So we don't have a problem with the rich not paying their fair share, and uh, this woman is constantly trying to pledge to play the, the, uh, the classes against each other because she's a classic Marxist. And that's what destroyed uh, all the socialist countries in the world. So if you think that's, if you want to play along with her, that's fine. Yeah, we're in the, we're the number 16 on the, um, in the, we're the 16th least socialist country in the world. Because we've avoided electing people like Cortez, but you'll vote for her now. No, not because I have no opportunity. Anyway, um, so anyway, we're worried about 16,000 households that earn more than $10 million a year versus 800,000 government workers affected by the sh shutdown or versus... Hey, I, I'm worried about the millions of people that are losing their jobs to illegal aliens. And that's millions of people, and you don't seem to give a flying fuck about I'm worried, that. I'm more worried about the 50 million people who will lose their jobs if to you say AI, If you say AI, a one AI, more... AI, AI, robot that's girlfriend. That's it, that's it. Okay, <laughs> Rick, Rick, okay. I'm, I'm worried about people losing their jobs right now to illegal aliens, and you're worried about AI 50 years from now. No, within 20 years. And you're worried about AI within 20 years. So that's the difference between me and Rick. Rick's got some very important priorities. He thinks robots are going to take a lot of people's jobs, and, and because of that, we don't need to stop illegal aliens right now from taking millions of Americans' jobs. Perfectly reasonable, perfectly logical. Do you think the homelessness in LA is a result of the illegal alien population here? Uh, no, uh, what's happening is this. The Democrats have decided to make homelessness legal 
in, the, in LA. And what they've done is they've increased the budget to 450 million for homelessness. And when they did that, the amount of homelessness doubled. Now, I don't know Wait, how- Wait, you know, well, hold on. You're saying that the state, the city of LA spends $450 million a year on homeless people. I believe that's the number. What are, where's the money going? Um, well, we have about 40,000 uh, homeless people. 60, in, I've, well, I've heard LA. between 30 and 60. Right, but, okay, but, it, but it, it's only going up. And the, amount of, the more money we're spending, the more, illegal, the more homeless people we get. Well, it seems like that would only be the case if we, that money was going to provide services. So I assume that that money is providing services? I guess so. Or, or it's probably just going to bureaucrats, which is what usually happens when Democrats get a hold of right, the purse so strings. L.A., well, I mean, one reason L.A. has a lot of homeless is the weather is pretty decent. Well, the reason that L.A. has a lot of homeless now, and it didn't have it when Republicans were in charge 20, 30 years ago, is because the Democrats are encouraging homeless people to come here. How? Okay, by making it legal. There used to be vagrancy laws that were enforced. And so now the, the Democrats have decided to make it legal for people to set up a home in front of your business and in your neighborhood. Whose analysis is this? Whose analysis? That's what the mayor of this city is doing. That's the law. They can put their homes, their, they, they can plop down anywhere they want now, and they can't be put in jail. But they can be told to get off the front of your property. Well, they can be told to get off your lawn, but you see, what they've done and is... And they can't block the sidewalk, so six, what does that leave? No, there, there, are, there are between thirty and 60,000 homeless that have turned downtown into, Skid Row. Uh, into a place that people can't do business and can't live because the Democrats are too confused to stop it. This is not a Republican thing. The Democrats are making this happen. The Democrats are encouraging homelessness by doing nothing to stop it. And because of this, when, so the, hom what would you when, when the homeless move in to these areas, mm -hmm. which they're now growing, which they're expanding in Los Angeles. What, would what happens is the crime rate skyrockets and the businesses are forced out. So because of the Democrats' policies, with, they're using the homeless to destroy the businesses and the residences in swaths of Los so Angeles. have the vagrancy laws been repealed? The vagrancy laws have been changed. It's now legal to plop yourself down anywhere in L.A., uh, I believe, unless you're on private property. So long that as you're taking... That doesn't seem a, reasonable. Well, that's what we're doing, Rick. Have you been downtown recently? Nobody goes downtown. Okay, I've been downtown quite a bit. And I can tell you, if you're from out of state, that Los Angeles is like a third world country right now. Well, L.A. has either the second or the third most homeless people of any city and in the And it's US. going up. The more money they spend, the more it goes up. And the more they, the Democrats change the laws, the more favorable it is for, for homeless people to come. Well, so, so the Democrats will destroy your cities. If you're not from L.A. and you're watching this, take a look at uh, pictures of, of the homeless cities the, the homeless uh, 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 encampments around Los Angeles that, are, that have sprung up by the thousands. So, so I, I'm still speaking. In fact, even the recent fires that Rick wanted to, that the Democrats wanted to blame on global warming were caused by homeless people camp, camped out in the forests lighting fires. Actually, no, PG&E. Doing poor maintenance seems to be the cause. Of no, it. no, no. There was a recent fire. One of the big well, ones. One of the bunch. big ones was caused by a homeless okay, encampment. Okay, fine. But the the biggest one, the the campfire that took out a whole town, was apparently caused by PG. Okay, doing. okay, Rick. So some yeah, of yeah, the massive yeah. fires in L.A. and a lot of the crime, and a lot of the economic hollowing out of our city 
is being caused by homeless people because the Democrats aren't encouraging the vag aren't enforcing vagrancy laws. So basically what you want to have happen is for LA to, to be able to legally boot people out of LA and have them go someplace else. I would have them booted into institutions where they can either receive care or punishment. All right, so I don't want to have this argument again, but yeah, it, it's, you can't keep apparently crazy people in lieu of, I guess, a strong diagnosis of, of crazy for more than 72 hours, which I believe but, is... But you can keep a vagrant. In other words, if the crazy person has to be released and then they go out and break the law by being vagrant, then you can put them right back in. Okay. So, so if you just have to have the will to save your city, but being a confused liberal, you don't know what to do. And you're, you're going along with a Democrat policy that destroys cities. So are you saying that in some previous era, back when America was great? Yes. That nationally, there, what, are you, what do you think the homelessness rate was, say, 30 years ago? Okay. Basically, I mean, it, it should not, okay, look, I'll briefly, it should not be legal to have homeless encampments in the middle of a city. That is, a, that is entirely a Democrat policy. Now, it, part of this is insanity. Part of these, many of these people should be put in, in loony bins, in mental homes. Uh, part of it is drug addiction. And these people should be put in uh, facilities, either, either jails or drug rehab centers, but they need to be swept off the streets. The money that we're spending to give them care should be given to them in, in, in places where they, they are forced to behave themselves. So it seems as if you're saying, or at least implying, that there are more homeless people now nationally than there have ever been before. I don't know the exact number, but, Rick. Right, but it, no, 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 don't, don't try to trap me into some weird math question. I'm saying that there has never been a time. If you went back into the in, 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 in previous eras, people didn't have camps of homeless people sitting in the middle of downtown in a major city. So you're saying in 1930? During the Depression, there were, there were Hoovervilles, yeah. if that's what you're going to bring up. Sure. But, well, we there was but, one major but, but we're not in a depression right now. But it seems like we like that the homeless the, the number of homeless that we have yes. nationally has probably been steadily rising. In Los Angeles it's definitely well, rising. And we have Because it's least, a Democrat run city. Well no, we have at least our fair share of a rising national tide of homeless. We have among and the also, most we have we have a, we have the most of any city, of any major city. It's in it's in the top two or three. Okay. Okay. So, so what's your point? So, and part of it might be due to government <clears throat> policy, and part of it is due to we have a fairly forgiving climate. So I would say that, and I've been going to uh, neighborhood council meetings for Studio City, and I'd say that um, the homeless... That homelessness is one of the, is perhaps the biggest issue, or it's in the top five at least. And at this point, it's one of the least tractable issues. And I would suggest that while some, some of this may be a, 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 an old problem, most of it is probably a newish problem that uh, we're going to have to need to, we, we need to figure out how to address. Well, it's a new problem created by Democrats. No, it, it's partly it's <clears> because, Demo created. because Democrats changed the law to allow this to occur. Yeah, but the law didn't suddenly make this huge number of homeless people, this rising tide of homeless well, people. Well, actually, it did because when you enforce the vagrancy laws, 
You're just you, pushing you homeless could, people to someplace else. Or you could put them in prison if you need to, if you want to, or well, mental We already homes. have, America already has, I mean, the push is in the opposite direction. Well, my, my point is, You're not gonna my point is, you, you, could, you could build, I mean, you could be very nice to them. I'm not saying you shouldn't take care of these people if they're legitimately mentally ill. I mean, I'd be, I would be happy to contribute to people that are schizophrenic, that are that are uh, think that they're talking to aliens, and put them in in mental homes. But my point is, is that if you make it legal to live on the street in front of a business or a home, then you're going to get more of this. And the Democrats do this. San Francisco is overrun. There, there are there's people shit on the street in San Francisco because it's run by Democrats. Nancy Pelosi's well, district well, give me a has people right, give shitting me a, on the street. So, there are maps in San Francisco so you can avoid homeless encampments. Uh, so tell and me avoid a city that is more draconian. Does does Phoenix kick out or improve? I don't know. Homes? I don't know which cities are better, but I know LA is one of the worst. And I would say, if I had to guess, probably any Republican-run city. If there are any major Republican-run cities, most of them are run by Democrats now. Let's take a break and look up some of this. I, I, I'm not interested. Let's yeah, move no, on to something else. No, you called a break last time. I'm calling a break this time. You want to see if the homeless problem is better in Republican areas? Yeah, I'm saying. I, I, okay, I would say that if there was a Republican city out there, it would have far fewer homeless than LA does or San Francisco. I would be willing to bet. Do you think that some of these actors, like standing up for women and should also stand up for the homelessness? Do you think that's a, a hypocritical stand? So what you're saying, director, is that um, at tonight's Golden Globes, Regina King said she only wants to work on productions that are half women in, um, and that people should stand up for the homeless. By the way, that's the end of her career. Nah, it's <laughs> if, not. If that's what she wants to do. Anyway, um, the, tr the difference is she came up with a specific proposal that she only wants to work on things that are staffed 50% women, but that, and that's a very clear thing. But what to do with the homeless is, as we've been discussing, very unclear. It's not unclear. You, you just want to get them out of L.A. and then you No, don't, you I'm don't. saying you enforce the vagrancy laws and you build facilities to put them in. Could you, could you hire them to build a wall, maybe? I don't know. Let's break and look up shit. Sorry. I'm going to look up the... If, we've got, if there's a rising number of homeless, and well, I'm going to look up... Lash, you're still working. I'm still recording. Is there something you want to say about the paintings? Some well, I don't know if you guys can see the changes. Um, I I don't know if you can see it without glare. Is there a lot of glare up there? Not really. Not really. Just the top one. All right. Well, let me let me just move the light so they can see the painting. Guys, if you ever want to see a painting properly, you have to turn it so that the light is at a forty-five degree angle. Is that better? Okay, so here's the deal. What I'm, what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying, to, I'm trying to make the title of the painting now is Lawgiver, all right? Because I, I have a theory that humanity is basically being fed ideas and insights by heaven. And that it really doesn't matter if these ideas are uh, about physics or if they're about laws. So either they're, whether they're laws of the universe or whether they're laws on how to live, I think that humanity is in a constant state of unfolding insight that comes to us through individuals of genius. And I'm saying that Moses is one of them. So I have, I'm going to have in the front here uh, a Ten Commandments, a, a uh, the uh, 
the Decalogue, they call it, which are the tablets. Over here I've got the snake on a, uh, on a uh, staff, which is a symbol of Moses. In the back I've got the pyramids, and, and beyond that, the first fire, which was the fire of creation, represented by the volcano. And over here I've got something that's going to represent physics. Uh, so that what I'm basically saying is that all understanding of the laws of the universe, whether they're God's laws or nature's laws, is the same process. And that humanity's come a long way in trying to understand these laws. And in a way, it's, it's very methodical how first man determined how to live with the Ten Commandments, with the laws of Moses, and now, now humanity is learning the laws of nature through, mm -hmm. through physics. So first, first how to live, and now how to understand uh, the material world. So that's that the nature of the Is that your interpretation? That it's, that's fascinating, or did you read that somewhere? That I just, first I, to live and now I just thought that up while I was having dinner. Uh, oh, here's <laughs> which. Wait, Rick's gonna attack me. No, no. Oh, you got so good. You almost never find a fucking thing that's on point. Wait, wait. You need to come here and listen. Oh, are you still taping? Can you yeah, can you go. speak? So wait, wait. wait speak. Find. Come up right. to the microphone. All right. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I just found a thing on Quora, and even though Quora is kind of publicly sourced, it's a quest. Somebody has asked the question: Why are U.S. cities with a large homeless population mostly run by Democrats? Um, well, Cora is a Muslim organization, by the way. Did you know that? Yeah, but when I go to it, I don't see Muslims. I see guys who are engineers. The reason they call it Cora is because it's like Quran. No, it's like Quorum. No, it's I, a plural, I, plural of Quorum. It's not no, Quran. No, but I, I, I believe it's Islam. All right, I'm not going to argue about it because I use it because it's you usually get good amateurs. Um, Anyway, I'm not sure what we're going to find, except here it is. So this respondent says it's, uh, what, this, the question is, uh, why are Democrat-run cities uh, have more of a homeless problem than uh, Republican cities? Um, uh, and it's, it's basically what you say. It's, uh, they call it NIMBY, not in my backyard. Democrats are less likely to kick the the homeless out of their districts. Um, so that's that's response one. Um, and I I'll, I previously read an article. Where's Lance? He's right there. Right? Oh, okay. Um, on uh, on Politifact. Uh, they were fact-checking, is the number of homeless rising? And it is rising like crazy in California. And they say the primary cause is there's a major housing shortage in California. Caused by the Democrats. Well, because the Democratic legislatures put such high taxes and environmental regulations on the construction industry that people don't want to build houses here. No. That's the reason. No, because you look at San Jose. It costs thirty-eight thousand dollars per house just to equip it with solar power and and to do, go with the environmental regulations. The Democrats are deliberately uh, keeping them from building more houses in the state of California. So, if it co say it costs thirty-eight thousand to comply with environmental regulations. So the average house in California costs around half a million. So you're saying that 7%, seven percent, seven and a half percent of the cost of an average house is due to environmental regulation. So I'm saying that you know the the, the cost, the difference between a five hundred thousand dollar house and a five hundred and thirty eight thousand dollar house isn't that much. That may but be somebody's when, margin. Maybe, but it's more like if you look at San Jose, San Francisco, Silicon Valley, um, the housing shortage there is because you have all these wealth, gen you have a bunch of rich mofos, highly paid Silicon Valley people coming in and 
squeezing out anybody who can't afford to pay uh, $3,000 a month for a room in, a, in an apartment. I mean, California has a housing shortage. I think we've lost our entire audience, Rick. Can we talk well, about something to... of more interest to people? Well, can, can we stop this and talk about national politics? You know, the Democrats are trying to destroy the country right now. They're trying to impeach Trump. Well, somebody, uh, some freshman congresswoman said, impeach the uh, motherfucker. Other Democrats are saying, well, not now, at least. Um, so yeah, there's talk of impeachment. And that They're going to try to impeach him. They yeah. will. Yeah, but they will. When they do it is. So I mean, we can talk about that. There. Can we current... talk about something like that? Sure. Um, ex so, but like your reasoning for, you know, why homeless here and whether it's a homeless paradise, uh, and why there's so many homeless. It, it's you know, it, it's. Rick, All if right, the okay. Democrats enforced the vagrancy laws, we wouldn't have so many homeless yeah, people. Yeah, because they'd be someplace else. We'd put them where it, we'd put them off the street. Yes, who's, they'd be somewhere else. Who's going to build okay. that shit? Who's going to spend all the money to build that stuff? It, you can build it for the money they're spending to give them things. They're spending millions and millions of dollars to, to give them all kinds of, of, of care. Spend it on structures that you can stick them in. Well, they're, they're trying that. They are trying to build structures to house homeless people. Because it turns out if you give homeless people a home, not a frickin' split level in Reseda, but if you give them a place to live, it ends up costing less, their care ends up costing the government less than if they're out on the street. But the trouble with doing that is that only a certain fraction of, A, you, it's tough to build that many home, places to live, and as you've mentioned, a lot of homeless people are, are either full-on crazy or borderline crazy, and even if you give them a place to stay, they won't necessarily stay. 